Joining me live now is the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg. Treasurer, good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us. So there's a, Good morning, Pete. There's another $20 billion on the nation's credit card. How are we going to pay it off? We'll pay it off gradually, but the real... The realistic point here is that the debt will be with us for some time to come and we have en encountered a one in a hundred year event in the global coronavirus crisis and uh, Australia is not immune uh, and many other countries around the world are seeing similar falls in their GDP or rises in their unemployment. I mean, let's not forget that between February and May, Pete, some two million Australians either lost their jobs or saw their working hours reduced. And as we speak, 5 million Victorians are in lockdown. So these are really difficult times and that's why the government uh, has used its strong balance sheet to support those in need. Well, you make a good point then because this is, this is the c concern that I have with, with the announcement yesterday. So you've got the support payment reductions that are based on an improving labour market, right? But then you've got Victoria that's in lockdown at the moment. There is no vaccine at the moment. There's not likely to be one this year. So how sure are you that the working environment is going to be better in six months' time? Well, forecasting is difficult in the best of times, let alone in a pandemic. But the reality is jobs are being uh, created. People are coming back to work. And we saw proof of that in the jobs numbers just last week. Pete, more than 210,000 people found work. Now, 60% of those were women and around 50% of those were young people. And outside of Victoria, restrictions are being eased. Cafes are opening, gyms are opening, uh, people are going, going to work. Of course, they're practising the social distancing requirements but they're starting to engage in their normal economic activity. So we've really got one country at two different stages and yesterday's announcement recognises the fact that we do need to transition uh, to, to lower payments, but we do need to provide those payments to those who need it most. But you can't guarantee there's not going to be another statewide shutdown, can you? Well, no one can guarantee uh, what will happen in, in terms of this virus. I mean, what we do know uh, is it doesn't take much uh, to see it um, to see a second wave, and many other countries uh, are, f are facing that at the moment. But what is absolutely critical uh, to our economic recovery is that when there are uh, spikes in new cases, um, that the health authorities quickly yeah. uh, deal with those effectively. And I think in New South Wales, uh, with their uh, tracing and, and testing, uh, um, they have been able to, to manage the situation, yeah. which should give us all some hope for the future. So will there be a JobKeeper 3.0 if there are other shutdowns? <laughs> Well, look, this, uh, this program uh, is going to run for 12 months and at $86 billion, Pete, it's the single largest economic measure Australia has ever seen. Right now, it's supporting about 3.5 million workers, 960,000 businesses. That's about 30% of the pre-COVID private sector workforce. And what Treasury found is that it's actually working very effectively, that it's targeted and that it's maintaining the formal connection between employers and employees and it's saving jobs yeah. and businesses and that's what the Morrison government has intended. You did mention yesterday that you expect about two and a half million people to come off JobKeeper by the Christmas period. Where are they going? Well, some uh, will uh, will obviously uh, go on to JobSeeker as well um, because uh, there will be some who, who actually need that additional support, but the most of them uh, will actually uh, see their, uh, their jobs uh, being supported by businesses that are becoming more viable. And I think that's the key mm. point here, uh, is that businesses are starting uh, to see their economic environment improve, albeit gradually, uh, and that is why uh, we're going to reapply the 30 and 50% eligibility test, uh, because it's important that only those businesses mm. are getting supported with the JobKeeper payment who need it. And, but what about regions? I mean, there's just no jobs going in regions. So is that where you, you suspect that a lot of those people who will have to go on a job seeker will be coming from? Oh, look, I think that there'll be pockets around the country, but it's important to, to underline that 
job keeper and job seeker are just two elements of a much broader and comprehensive economic response that the Morrison government has undertaken. Mm. A $30 billion cash boost, uh, which is designed to support businesses uh, on the, based on the size of their payroll. Uh, as you know, we've been providing cash payments uh, to, to households. The Prime Minister has just announced a very significant $2 billion skills package, uh, extending the uh, wage subsidies for apprentices. So there's a whole lot of things that we're doing, as well as sector support for the aviation sector to, to, to support uh, the freight task. Uh, and, uh, and maintain uh, flights between between capital cities. There are a lot of things that we're doing, Pete, in addition to just JobKeeper and JobSeeker, which is helping to keep people in work. Sure. What do you expect the unemployment rate to bottom out at? Well, the unemployment rate is at 7.4%. Uh, but what I uh, said the other day is it's not the best indicator of where the unemployment rate really is. That's the effective unemployment rate, which today sits at 11.3%, because that takes not only into account the official unemployment uh, rate, but also those who have left the workforce altogether or mm. those who are on zero hours. Uh, in the next couple of days, uh, well, actually tomorrow, Thursday, uh, I'll be providing an economic update, and that will provide our best forecasts mm. at what the unemployment rate will be, and that will obviously mm. show an increase over time. Yeah, well, I was going to say, it's going to worsen. By how much, can you say? Well, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I will okay. be putting that number out. I'll be putting that number out tomorrow. Sure. But it's fair to say um, we are seeing people come back into work, but we're also seeing more people come into the workforce. Mm. That's boosting the participation rate and that's affecting the unemployment rate. Okay, well, I'll just return to my first question now about how we're going to pay it off. Uh, it's coming back to this old argument now. Uh, do you rule out increasing taxes to, to pay it off? Well, Pete, we've been ma made, very, made it very clear um, that we're the party of lower taxes and that's what our track record shows. I mean, since the last election, uh, we've legislated the tax cuts uh, that the Australian people voted for. They rejected uh, what our opponents put up, which was $387 billion of higher taxes, and both with income tax and company tax, we have cut those rates. Mm. Uh, what we see is the future for the Australian economy is to grow it, is to capitalise on our opportunities, whether it's in trade, uh, whether it's in investment, whether it's in the mining and agricultural sectors. And so, therefore, we're um, undertaking a whole series of reforms designed to boost our economic growth mm. and as we increase the size of the economy we can pay back that debt. You, you, you talked about your economic update that's coming tomorrow. Uh, there have been um, some mm. quotes in the paper, I'm not sure if they're attributed to you or not, but, but it has been mentioned that there are some eye-watering numbers tomorrow. How would you describe mm. it? Can you give us a preview? Well, I did say that on radio the other day. There are, they are eye-watering numbers because the budget bottom line has been really hit by the coronavirus. No surprises there. Uh, they are very big numbers. Again, uh, lots of commentators have put their views out. We'll give you the Treasury's uh, estimates tomorrow. But the reality is on both the payment side, um, we have had a big hit as more people uh, have got this income support from the government, but also on the receipt side, the revenue side, we've seen a big fall as businesses are mm. not making the profits that they were and people are not in jobs in the same way they were and therefore not paying tax in the same quantities that they were. How big is the deficit going to be? Very big. Anything more on that? <laughs> it, look, it's a it's a very significant number, yeah. but as the governor said yesterday, uh, you know the the economy uh, can manage uh, the extra borrowing that we've undertaken. But but Pete, I do want to emphasise that we came into this crisis from a position of economic strength. Our net debt to GDP was about a quarter of what it was in the United States and the United Kingdom, about one seventh of what it was in Japan. Mm. We had delivered the first balanced budget in 11 years. We were on track for a surplus even after the devastating bushfires early in the year. So mm. we, we had 
brought spending under control, the economy was continuing to grow, and then we were hit with this once-in-a-century pandemic, and that was one hit too many. And, and is there a marker, just on the Victorian border issue, uh, is there a marker on, now that numbers you know, aren't doubling, there seems to be something of a hold on them, is there a marker on when you'd like to see them reopened again? And I, I know this is a, a way off, but, but is there a level that you're looking at? You're talking about the international borders? No, 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 uh, the, the, well, Victorian, the, will... the Victorian border. OK, well, the Victorian uh, New South Wales border obviously uh, has been closed based on the medical advice and I will leave it to the medical experts yeah. to determine the timing of that opening. But what I, what I can say is that we need to manage these spikes in cases. We need to follow the medical advice and if we can do that, then that will be the best lift mm. you can ever give to the Australian economy and to jobs. Just finally, Treasurer, can I just ask on a personal point how you're holding up? You're spending a lot of money. You're working until late last night. You're up again talking to us early this morning. Um, how are you doing? A bit sleep deprived, but uh, no different to many other people across the community, including a few TV presenters early in the morning, I guess. <laughs> but uh, look, this is a very this is this is a very challenging time for for the Australian community. My real um, thoughts and concerns are with those medical professionals on the front line who are doing amazing work on our behalf, and of course those people who have tragically lost their job. I mean, a neighbour of mine. Uh, is, a, is uh, working for Qantas. Uh, uh, he's obviously been out of work. Um, there are many others uh, across the community, whether it's in the tourism sector, the aviation sector, the hospitality sector, the arts sector, the accommodation sector. Uh, people have seen their lives and their livelihoods turned upside down by this pandemic. So we need to maintain our strength. We need to obviously stay safe, but by coming together and working together, we can get to the other side. And yesterday's announcements, Pete, will be a big relief to, to the Australian people. Well, Treasurer, appreciate your, your time this morning as always. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Pete.